Okay, everybody, uh, I'm going to be continuing on my drawing here. Uh, my client, I'm sure, is anxious to get it. And uh, I've been working on this for quite a few months, as I have a whole lot of other things going on at the same time. Unfortunately, I can't stay on one thing. But with all that yah ya said, we're going to continue on here. Now, what I'm going to be focusing on right now is the neck, the upper chest here, and the garment. So uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. And then I'll be going back later or maybe a little bit during this video and tidy up some of these other things uh, as I happen to see them as I'm going along. The tone of the neck on this side, as you can see, is it's very very light uh, a lot of highlight here and then it goes into shadow on this half here so uh, to get this lightness but not to be as light as the paper itself I have to use one of my lightest pencils and in this case it would be the 4H pencil that I'm going to use and I'm going to be blending as well to, to keep it as smooth as possible and then if it starts to spot which will happen you start getting little dark areas and so forth uh, I will then go through and just take my kneaded eraser and take up any little blotches that does not need to be there let me just move my light source here at the uh, That way I can get this bar over here. There we go. Okay, so. Um, as I've mentioned before, that um, I pretty much just move in a very small oval kind of way like this with, with my hand held in the back of the pencil and letting mostly the weight of the pencil, I do maybe give it a little bit of pressure, very little, and then I just allow it to glide. And this also gives me a lot of control as to where everything is going. And I'm going to be going down to about right here, and this is where the garment actually starts. I have a very faint line here. So I'll come down here, for example, and just start getting this in right now so that I know how far I can go. Now because this is all done in real time, um, if you find that it's like um, watching paint dry, I completely understand. And feel free to uh, speed up the video. You can do that with your YouTube settings. Go to settings there and tell it to go at uh, two times speed or whatever. Um, so I'm not going to time lapse any of this because I know that there are a lot of you that have made left comments that you actually prefer the real time and that since you have control over the speed that it's better to just leave it as real time and and uh, some of you have also commented that it's actually quite soothing to just kick back. It's, I guess that was the appeal of the Bob Ross type shows was that, uh, you know, you just chill and watch old Bob paint away. Uh, but I certainly understand if you don't want to, uh, you don't want to watch this in real time. But for those who do, you know, awesome. So I will... I will make comments along the way just so there's not too much quiet time here but at the same time I mean there's only so much that I can that I can add but just to give you my thoughts um, I'm just I'm just lightly putting on the skin tones here and if you find there's areas for example where um, you have those uh, grid lines 
And if you're going to do this in a light area, you may want to get those grid lines out of there because they will show up, like right here. Um, this area right here is going to be darker. As you can see right there, it's darker there. So I'm not too worried too much about the grid lines in that area there. But up here, I definitely don't want them to show up. So... I'm going to make sure I, I get that out of there. And also, because of the amount of time that this paper and drawing has been sitting on my drawing table here in the last year, uh, it's starting to collect a little bit of uh, dust and dirt and so forth, uh, which is unfortunate. And, and so I need to kind of clean some of that off because um, I don't want to... I don't want to give a bad looking product to my client who's been patiently waiting for this. Okay. All right. So anyway, make sure that my needed eraser is in a nice little point so I can use that there. And we're, let's just keep going. But uh, right now I'm just putting a base coat down. And I'm not going to worry about details just yet. It's all going to be pretty much just one base tone. And then I'll get in there and darken the areas that are dark in it. And put in little details and so forth. Okay. So just go in there. Now of course if you're impatient and you want to do things quicker. Uh, just go get some graphite powder. Dip your Q-tip in and go and cover the whole thing the thing is is it's going to probably put too much down I'm pretty sure it will and I don't want to I definitely don't want to do that especially for this area here that's got to be very bright so um, now I notice here I have a little bit of darkness marking the shadow of the edge of the shoulder so I'm going to make sure I get that in there. Okay. And then I'll blend that in with the, the surrounding areas here. Because you don't want actually to have a line. And when I'm doing this also, you know, I kind of look for, like, where does the highlights end? And I want to get it marked off. So I don't lose my reference. So I'll go something like this and just start shading that in there like this. So that... I know where the transition is going to happen. It's just kind of like giving yourself a note. Normally when I'm drawing, I'm listening to music. It really is calming. Unfortunately, when I do that, and YouTube then flags my videos and demonetizes them because it picks up on that the music is copyrighted, you know, and maybe Led Zeppelin isn't happy about hearing Highway to Heaven or something, and in one of my videos so I decided you know what I'm just going to draw in silence here except for listening to my own voice which is no fun but it is what it is okay I got some kind of a little something something I didn't like there okay Now I got my 
pan resting on this bar here, which is is not touching the paper, as you can see. Um, I built this in my garage so I could slide it across the top here and and rest my hand on it. It's pretty cool. Um, it's better than using the glove that I often use because the glove can act as a blender and start blending things if you slide it across your drawing. So it's better to keep your hands up, oh, up and away from your drawing. Don't rest it on the drawing itself. Um, you know, I know that some will lay paper down or they'll tape paper to their hand, which is all fine. But as you move your hand around, that paper acts as a blender, so you have to be really careful when, when doing that. And, and just rest your hand down. Don't slide it across your drawing because um, that's a big problem. And I'm kind of looking at areas here where uh, I may have left a, a light area. And I'm going back and making sure that I get that tone in there. Just uh, making little ovals, making sure that I'm covering all the white area of the paper. Don't want to go too dark. This is the highlighted area. But I don't want to leave it as a paper tone either. Now another thing too, by the way, is I never did the ear. I can come up here, just kind of get some of it done. Because it's very faint. need some darker pencils over here but you know as I'm drawing I'm kind of seeing things that that needs to be done and I haven't forgotten about this area I'll just come back to it later but I'm getting some of it down since I have the light pencil with me right now and And the ear looks so light. It's there's hardly any shading in the ear itself. So it will be interesting on how to how to bring that out. Anyway, so I'll leave that for now. I'll come back in later. Maybe go a little bit darker with a darker pencil. So we'll leave that for now. Go back to the, the neck. Small little circles. Little ovals. Kind of gives a nice little skin texture too. That's what I like about this approach. I know some artists just like to do the stroke which is fine kind of gives a smoother look but I like the textured look especially if I'm dealing with skin skin especially for adults is not that smooth I like baby skin 
And then this just gives me so much more control. I can really control the amount of tone that I lay down. And I can control where there's, if I, I've noticed certain areas is a little blotchier than others, I can get in there and spread it out a little bit better. So like I see a little white area here, I can come in real quick here, take care of that. Just little ovals. you don't press down on the paper then you won't be getting dark in areas that you shouldn't be getting dark and make it hard to erase too because you don't press the graphite into the paper just let the grade of the pencil do its job it'll get as dark as it's going to get and then that's it and if you needed to go darker you get yourself a softer pencil you just move up the ladder in grades that's why we have different uh, pencil grades so that you don't have to press down to make things dark you just move up the grade to the softer pencils get out of the H's and go into the B pencils Just little ovals. So let me now just kind of scan in here a little bit closer. I'm going to move this right here and then zoom in right there so that you can see a little better how I'm moving the pencil just in little ovals. Now I'm not sure if you can really see this if I was to really, let's see how close I can get in there. Okay, it obviously, I can only zoom in, let me zoom out a little bit more, come on, get in focus, a little bit there. Okay, that's about the extent, can you see these little ovals that I'm doing here, see? And it gives a certain skin texture, which is pretty cool. And then I'm going to blend it anyway. So that it flattens out the tone a little bit. But I wanted you to see how it gives this skin texture here. See, if I see any kind of white areas, I can 
I can just kind of go in there. I have full control of everything here. Okay. You take your, your Q-tip and you just kind of lightly and gently, don't press hard, but just kind of blend. So the little ovals are not too harsh, but it becomes part of the skin texture. So I'm just kind of moving the Q-tip around real nice and gently, letting it blend. See that really nice texture, skin texture. See that? Okay. So continuing on here, I'm going to pull away a little bit in the uh, zoom category. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to continue on here. I still have a ways to go to get coverage.
Okay, coming down to the end here for this half of the chest. And I'm going to blend again. Okay, so <clears throat> you see I've left a base tone down, but clearly um, it's just flat right now. I'm going to have to now add in all these darker details that you see here and here and this, all this right here, and a little bit of darker in these little outlayer areas right here to give this neck uh, the appearance of having, you know, uh, ups and downs and curves and so forth. Okay, so this was this was for the base tone that I did here. This side's going to be much darker, so I'm not going to use my 4H for this. I'm actually going to go in there with, with uh, the darker charcoal or graphite and get that base put in and then start taking highlights out. Now I can do that now, which is probably a good idea because having this next to the lighter area makes this look dark. But if you darken this area over here, then it will lighten this and then it will give me more of a gauge as to whether I'm too light or too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this side now and I'm going to get it darkened up with some uh, darker graphite. And this time I'm going to use my uh, graphite powder. And I think I'll use this one here, um, Creta Color Graphite Powder, just to get that darker base tone down. So you dip your Q-tip in there, tap off any excess. Okay, and then I'm just going to carefully apply it in the direction that the neck is. That will help me as I go in with my details.
remember this is just the base tone I'm going to have to go on top of this with darker pencils most likely I'll go charcoal because um, of how dark it is in the original but first I want to get all the white covered here with a nice good base tone that's darker than that over there kinda gives me a head start you might say and don't press down I'm just sliding here whoops that was not smart don't spit on your drawing when you're talking Okay, so you can see that I've started on my light side and my dark side tones. And you can see over here you have light and you have dark. Now I've got a lot of work to do here and as I do this, it's going to make this side come brighter and brighter and brighter. And then I can gauge how much darker this needs to be. Because right now, just comparing this to this, this looks darker than this. But I know that that will change as I start to get darker here to match more what I see here. So I'm done with my charcoal powder. I've got my light base and my darker base down. Now this is the approach I like to use is getting the base down. <coughs> Excuse me. So I need to start working on the darkness over here and looking at this it is really 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 dark here. So what I can do is I can start coming in with charcoal here and then start feathering it out here to get it lighter and lighter and see how that works. And to do that I'll start with, let's see, my uh, Primo Elite Grande, which is one of my darkest pencils, one of. And I'm going to go right into the darkest area right here. And start laying down some of this dark material. 
and then I'll blend it out and see how that looks. And I can see that the darkness kind of comes out to here. So it's pretty much like this with it really dark right here. So. Now I'm starting to lighten up on my pressure of this charcoal pencil as I come out to this edge here. And I'm going to start blending out in a moment. And here I want to get darker. Right up to that edge. Kind of flicking out to really get the sharp edge here with the dark pencil. And then move out more into the lighter area. I'm lifting the pencil up so it feathers on the end more. And then I'm going to blend here in a second so it'll take care of more of that. Plus it gives me more control to do this because I put the pencil down where I want to start and I flick away from that edge. So it gives me that nice sharp area there. Lighten up a little bit as I come out. All right, now what I'm going to use is my paper blender, one of these little 
pocket rockets and you can see how the tips all charcoaled out and with this I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to kind of feather out into the lighter area and see see how much I can get to go over there and how dark and smooth I can make this area in the shadow here come out this gives me a lot of control because you can use it like a pencil You can see I'm moving in the direction of the neck that goes like this. Picking up material over here in the dark area as I'm blending and smoothing it out and moving it into the lighter area.
All right, I'm going to use my Q-tip here. <clears throat> Just kind of give it a little more of a blend here. You have to be careful. It will lighten up areas too. So if you don't want to lighten up an area, make sure you don't go over that area. Long ways to go on this neck, but we got a good start here. You notice how I gone from in the dark, and then we're coming out into the light here. See, now I got to get in here and get even darker. Just going to get my Primo pencil here. And I'm going to add some more charcoal here to the areas that I know it needs to be a little on the darker side. And then as I blend it, it'll lighten up. And I can use that material to blend out. So... Here we have the Adam's apple area. Following the shape that I that I see on this throat here. As close as I can. So I got a little bit there, just a little bit to get started. And in here, this area right here needs a little more material as well. And the reason why I'm doing this kind of in a like in a bunch of lines um, is because these got hairs down here that look like dark lines and I can use these strokes to my advantage to not only provide some more dark material that I can blend around but to get that kind of illusion of these beard lines um, as well so it kind of does double duty you might say I'm not trying to draw hairs or anything but it will give the illusion of some neck hairs as I'm doing this okay that's good for right now I'm gonna use my blender again and just start directing the flow of which direction I want this to go
This is a Primo HB charcoal pencil, by the way. Um, if you can see that, Primo HB. I'm going to get this area toned down a little bit more. Because I need to really get dark right in this area right here. I'm using a very light touch here to kind of direct the charcoal in the areas I wanted to go without getting too dark. I just want to darken in the area, but I don't want to go pitch dark. Not when I don't have to just yet. Keeping in my eyes to where the highlight areas are so I don't make that too dark. Starting to get there. Any areas that I think needs to be a little bit lighter, I can go in here with my Q-tip and kind of just take it off a little bit. Then sit back and try to compare and see how I'm doing in that respect.
Okay, so that's about what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to stop right here, but I do want to make a point now. Now that I've gotten this area in close to this area that I see right here, this dark area, match it up as best I can, I could see the difference between th that tone and that tone and this tone and this tone. And as you can see now, by doing it this way, I can see that now I need to go a little bit darker on this side. So my next video, I'll continue on the neck and we'll work on this area and then we'll get it all to connect together. Okay, well, that does it for this one. Another long video, but it's in real time. I hope you like it. If so, please click the like button. That really does help my channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.